Nigerian Labour Congress embarks on five days industrial action in Kaduna. Well, how often do you check your blood pressure? Today is World Hypertension Day and this year's theme says you should measure your blood pressure accurately, control it to live longer. Well, these and more you get on Panorama today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Ruth Aguela. Let's begin by telling you that President Mohamed Buhari is in Paris, the French capital ahead of African Finance Summit. The summit, to be hosted by President Emmanuel Macron, will focus on Africa's economic situation following shocks from coronavirus pandemic, as well as getting relief from increased debt burden. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. President Mohamed Buhari alighting the Nigerian Air Force 001 aircraft at Le Bouget International Airport, Paris, at a quarter past 10 Sunday evening local time. It is his first official visit to Europe since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in February last year. On hand to receive him were senior French government officials, Nigeria's ambassador to France, as well as ministers of foreign affairs, finance, budget and national planning, health, industry, trade and investment, and other top government officials. President Buhari is expected to join other heads of state and government at the African Finance Summit on Tuesday to collectively discuss external funding and debt relief for Africa as well as private sector reforms. This is about um, seeking to generate money for the revival of African economies following the major hit they have received from the coronavirus epidemic. The continent has been plunged into an economic recession, the first of its type in the last 25 years. So uh, uh, President Macron is doing something that is re very remarkable and important for our continent. Uh, uh, th this conference is supposed to uh, seek money that will be used uh, to restart the cycle of development on the continent. Uh, this is why we're here. President Mohamed Buhari is scheduled to hold high-level talks with his French counterpart, Emmanuel Macron. The two leaders are expected to discuss growing security threats in the Sahel and the Lake Chad region and other areas critical to the economies of both countries. Security is... Uh, a key issue is a key element of the president's uh, election and re-election agenda. And uh, when you consider that uh, Nigeria, as we are geographically located, we are surrounded by uh, French-speaking African countries. And uh, uh, France is the metropolitan headquarters of French-speaking world. Uh, very influential in the affairs of uh, the continent. And so therefore, uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari is right, uh, very correct in seeking partnership with uh, President Macron, so that together with our African brothers, we can seek to find permanent solutions you know, to the problems, not only around Lake Chad, but in, their, in, the, in the entire uh, Sahel and Sub-Saharan West Africa, which is racked by this uh, crisis of uh, terrorism. During the visit, President Mohamed Buhari will receive key players in critical economic sectors as well as heads of other European institutions. From Paris, France, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Well, back home, Enugu State Head Office of the Independent National Electoral Commission has been attacked Sunday evening, that is the 16th of May 2021. INEC headquarters Abuja, while confirming the incident, says some unidentified persons overpowered the security personnel on duty around 9 p.m. and tried to set the entire building ablaze. The attention of the security agencies, as well as the federal and state fire services in Enugu, was drawn to the the unfolding situation and they responded swiftly. The attack has set the four-year blaze, vandalized some offices in the main building and caused extensive damages to some of the Commission's movable assets within the premises. Six utility pickup vehicles 
were burnt down while two more were smashed and damaged. All right, let's join. Um, we want to bring you a reaction following um, the um, strike action in Kaduna. Let's join our um, correspondent, Suleiman Abdullahi Rukachuku. He's in Kaduna right now. He's standing by live to bring us an update on the strike. And he's been monitoring the situation. Suleiman, um, what's the situation over there? I have grown okay. from the rock and fire from uh, where we are. Those are the teachers that were sacked. And then he replaced them with... Well, uh, the situation now is uh, the fact that we are at the state the assembly complex. Uh, the gate is locked, but the leadership of the National uh, Nigerian Labour Congress is here addressing workers, telling the world why they have been back the five-day warning strike. Uh, right now, the national president of the NLC is the one speaking, and uh, behind him are leaders of other trade unions, uh, such as the NUT, the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees, uh, and other, several other affiliate uh, organizations or trade unions who have joined in the strike action. And uh, currently, uh, all the agencies, virtually all agencies of state and federal government have in compliance with the directive by the NLC uh, locked up at their gates. Uh, in some places where security operatives have uh, gained access or have opened the gates, workers have been seen, especially at the state secretaries, workers have been seen, you know, hanging out of the gates, uh, you know, in solidarity with the uh, strike action. So virtually filling stations, uh, even the railway station at Rigasa, the standard gauge railway station, and uh, all filling stations, the banks have remained closed, all in compliance with this one strike embarked upon by the Nigerian Labour Congress. So may I join you with the national president of the NLC as he is, as he is addressing the workers to now hear one or two things from what he is telling the workers. When you answer even the media, I listen today and people reported. Okay, go ahead, right. Abdullahi. I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You could just give him the mic. Yeah. That those workers are already penciled for sack. And you know the irony of it? Whereas the law said also, the redundancy law, said that the pay of that worker that you want to disengage must be given to him first or alongside with his letter, including severance package. That has not been done. All the letters that we have, those workers have been disengaged with impunity. It is written there that your payment will be paid in due course. The same way done to the primary school teachers. So, comrades, the All right, implication Abdullahi, of this that should be it. to Kaduna State people is Abdullahi, so can you hear me? That should be it. When breadwinners of a family are men... All right, uh, well... That is the, you know, the address by the national president of the NLC, uh, talking about why they have embarked on this one strike, uh, citing several examples. Uh, some of these things he is mentioning have been written on some sheets of paper which have been distributed or shared among the striking workers. Uh, it has to do with arbitrary sacking of workers, uh, you know, non-payment of entitlements to those who have been sacked before. Uh, both at the local government level, the state level, and uh, the plan which they have, uh, you know, claimed the state government is planning to sack more workers. So these are some of the issues he's highlighting, and uh, he is also expressing the resolve by the NLC and other affiliate trade unions to continue with the industrial action. All right. Hopefully, uh, you know, there will be a kind of negotiation. Then the reports we have gotten from Kafanchan and Zaria also suggest that uh, banks have remain closed, filling stations have remained closed, workers have complied with the industrial right. action in those areas. So this, our reporters informed us earlier. Okay, thank you very much, Abdullahi, for that update. We'll definitely um, get in touch with you as the events unfold. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Our correspondents there giving us an update on the strike action. We hear is a major shutdown in Kaduna. But with um, their reactions, especially from the Kaduna State Head of Service, Bara Atu Mohamed, who reacted to the industrial action um, by the Nigerian Labour Congress. So let's see that. As you are aware, um, civil servants below grade level 14 have been at home since November last year. 
uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, protocols. We have um, declared some of them essential on essential services and have recalled them, but there are very few. We have issued a circular directing all MDAs to open um, uh, registers, attendance registers, so that we take attendance of those on level 14 and above that may refuse to come to work. Those below level 14 should continue to stay at home until we issue a circular to recall them. The circular that we have issued is only for level 14 and above and those who are on essential services whom we have recalled to be coming to the office. That's the case. All right, the head of service, Kaduna State, they are reacting to the industrial action going on presently in Kaduna State. You're watching Panorama. Let's go on a break. We're back. Stay tuned. We need to reach out to the people. We should convince them. We should use the systems that we have used before in getting our people vaccinated over the years. Please, this is good for you and good for others, and good for the health of all Nigerians. I want to reassure our people that as you are governor, I will not subscribe to anything that will harm you, nor affect your well-being. We just have our other states, including states, to demonstrate capacity to rise to the pressure in our collective efforts to win the desired war against COVID-19. From all indications, quality, safety, efficacy, the benefits outweigh the side effects. So, uh, from all indications, uh, it's generally safe. I have to congratulate Mr. President, and particularly the PTF, and then the government. Thanks for staying tuned. One in every four men and one in every five women are hypertensive. Well, that's according to statistics. Aisha Uba Ali in this report examines the causes, prevention and management of hypertension. It is commonly referred as the silent killer. Hypertension known as high blood pressure, a condition which the vessels persistently raise pressure. Although medical experts have classified blood pressure into two, primary and secondary, they have also continually advised adults above 30 years to endeavor to live a healthy lifestyle and present themselves for regular check. I'm aware, I'm aware. Okay. Uh, so that's why I did this yesterday. And uh, the doctor said, um, very okay. And the last time I checked was November last year. According to statistics, it has been estimated that nearly 1 billion people globally are affected by hypertension, with one and a half of the population not aware of their condition. This figure, they say, may rise to 1.5 billion by 2025. High blood pressure is more common in adults. Medical experts say it also presents in the World Hypertension Day, which is marked every May 17th, is to create awareness and also make people understand that it can be prevented and controlled. But if the pregnant woman, after having had her baby, she was already what we call preeclamptic and eclamptic, who knows? And she continues with her habits of um, heavy fat diet and being sedentary, not even moving because she has a little baby with her, then her hypertension might come to be her neighbor. The World Hypertension Day was first inaugurated in May 2005 and 16 years after, it has remained an annual event. The theme for this year's commemoration is measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, live longer. In Abuja, Aisha Obaali, NTA News. 
Well, hypertension is indeed a very serious issue, and we want to expand the discourse. I have with me in the studio Dr. Mutala Ngabia. He is the consultant, a consultant cardiologist, of, uh, and also head of Department of Medicine, Metama District Hospital, Abuja. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we shouldn't be saying happy World Hypertension Day. That's not a good thing, right? Mm, not at all. I agree with you. Mm. <laughs> okay, so what's the prevalence of hypertension in Nigeria? Currently, um, um, the pooled average is about 22.5% of adult um, um, population. It shows that um, Nigeria having a population of about 200 million people, um, one in every five adult male hypertens hypertensive, even though this prevalence varies um, from region to region and from town to town. Uh, depending on local epidemiological factors, but that's the average. Uh, that's what we see. Okay, but how aware are citizens of the prevention causes, you know, and even care? There's this maxim about the rule of three, a rule of 30 percent, that um, um, of 30 percent of adults having hypertension, mm. among all adults having hypertension, only 30 percent are aware. Among those that are aware, only 30 percent are on effective treatment. Mm -hmm. And among those 30% that are on effective treatment, only 30% are getting controlled or are controlling. So you can see by the time you extrapolate, you discover that only a very few fraction of those that have hypertension are really aware. 30 of 30 of 30. So you eventually get to only about 10 or less than 10% that are actually taking medications and getting controlled. If you have an average of um, uh, of 50 million people, for example, in Nigeria, let me just use that figure. Eventually, only a fraction, 5 million, for example, are on effective treatment and getting control, leaving the vast majority of them carrying with us such heavy burden hmm. and not even taking the medication appropriately and not getting controlled. You know, would you pin it to the fact that because there is this new revelation, I don't know if it's new, you would tell us, you're the expert, young people are coming up with hypertension. You know, um, is it because people are not going for regular checkup because there's this perception that it's only when you're getting old, you know, you get to see signs of your BP increasing? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, young people, quite a lot of young people are getting uh, to come down with hypertension. Uh, hypertension generally are uh, broadly two types. We have what is called primary or essential hypertension, mm -hmm. the one that is adult onset, and then we have what we call secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension means that there is a cause, there is a traceable cause. You can find it. What is, what is the it. cause? Quite a number of times, the first culprit is the kidney problem. Okay. Yes, if you see a young, a young man. Uh, less than 25 years, okay, I'll use 25 now, coming down with hypertension, you need to actually aggressively check. There are quite a number of conditions that can bring about that, but number one, culprit is the kidneys. If a person has, if a young man has a kidney disease, it's likely going to have hypertension. Before now, yes, you, you wait until somebody reaches 40, 45, before you start looking out for essential hypertension. But now, what we are seeing is that the age is coming down coming down drastically. 30, you see a, a young man, 30 years with hypertension, you look out for all the possible causes you don't see, so it's essential hypertension. So even at essential hypertension, the age at onset of essential hypertension is actually coming down significantly. Okay, let's look at prevention, because I'm guilty of that. Uh, we have, we, most of us have this perception that when we're getting older, we should just That's go check for our blood the pressure. The first thing to actually yeah. look out for is a family history. Okay. Do you have a family history? Do you have what we call the risk factors? And risk factors, any member of your family having it, the age you talk about, male sex, smoking, alcohol, you know, sedentary lifestyle, staying in one place for too mm. long, with lack of exercise, poor dietary habits, you know, those are what we call risk factors. So if one has a risk factor, he needs to be more, you know, Conscious, act, of conscious of whatever uh, the fact that yes, he has the chance, and then of course, what about prevention? Yeah. Prevention, when you, when, when you have the risk factor and when you know that you're successful of developing it, then you take your prevention um, more seriously. There are, there are levels of prevention. We have primordial prevention, we have primary prevention, we have secondary prevention, and we have tertiary prevention. I like talking about primordial prevention because if a parent, for example, is hypertensive, it means that he should start 
educating his children right from the time they are two years old to be conscious of the fact that yes, they have the chance of developing hypertension and start prevention at that stage. That's pre that's premature prevention. All right. So, you know, and then of course. Um, uh, primary prevention, taking care to avoid all the complications once once I have developed it, once I have the blood pressure, getting it controlled and doing aggressive um, lifestyle. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Murtala Mugabe. Thank My you. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right. He's a consultant cardiologist and we've been talking about hypertension. Let's look at all the issues. Advocacy against child abuse and gender-based violence has once again been brought to the fore. As Catholic women in Abuja converged on the Pita and Paul Parish Nyanya to celebrate 110 years existence of the World Union of Catholic Women Organization, Charles Alpha reports that the women, the minister of Women Affairs was at the parish to identify with the women. A milestone achievement of motherhood, a reminder of the vital roles women play in the society and the need to refocus and intensify awareness against all forms of child abuse and gender-based violence characterize the celebration of a centenary and a decade of the World Union of Catholic Women's Organization at the Peter and Paul Parish, Nyanya Abuja. Today is a very, very significant day in the life of the women. From the pulpits, the message was clear. The unity of all and sundry is sacrosanct and must be upheld at all costs. And women in this regard are considered vital change agents. We give glory and thanks to Almighty God that all this while the women have been carrying the church along and the women have done extremely well. And today there's nothing we can do than to celebrate. For the Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, gender inequality and violence have eroded societal values. And parents, in this regard, she said, owe oh, it's a duty to provide their children moral education and care for their needs. When you see something, you say something. Watch out for the signs in your home. Because a rapist is not a stranger. A rapist is always somebody within the family or within the neighborhood. So we have to do everything possible to protect the girl child. Not even the girl child, the boys. Catholic women from various parishes who were part of the celebration used the day to remember colleagues who lost their lives fighting the cause of women. In Abuja, Charles Alpha, NTN News. You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News and also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www www.nta.ng forward slash life. All right, let's bring you an update on COVID-19. Seven new COVID-19 infections have been recorded nationwide within the last 24 hours, representing the lowest daily statistics in about a year. Now, this brings the country's total confirmed cases to 165,709. The Niger Center for Disease Control Records shows that Niger State reported five new infections, while River State reported two infections. Active cases nationwide remain 7,224. Total discharge so far stands at 156,413, while the death toll is 2,066. Well, let's bring the sports updates with Badi Adele. The president of the African Mini Football Confederation, Ben Salah Atraf, arrived in Nigeria Monday for a familiarization and inspection tour ahead of the second African Mini Football Confederation Nations Cup, scheduled for 8 to 17th July 2021 in Ibadan, Oyo State. The president, after meeting with some bigwigs in the Nigerian sports fraternity in Abuja, will be in Ibadan to assess the country's readiness to host the event. We're coming here to send positive message to 
all other countries around Africa and around the world that uh, Nigeria is very safe and uh, and ready to host uh, African Nation Cup. The Nigerian Television Authority has been named the official broadcaster for the tournament. Meanwhile, Aqua United head coach Kennedy Boboye says his players must remain focused to realize their dreams of winning the 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League title. The promise keepers defeated local rivals Dakada 2-0 on Sunday to maintain their lead atop the MPFL standings and with the likes of Canopilas, Quora United and Reverse United closely following the U.S. base team. Boboye has urged his team to put an end to their wastefulness in front of goal. It has been a problem in not just uh, Aqua United, I think virtually teams teams uh, in the premiership because any team you play against you see chances being thrown away elsewhere super falcons captain asizato shuala is still relishing winning her maiden uefa women's champions league with barcelona the spanish champions demolished chelsea for nil on sunday to win the champions league for the first time in their history with oshuala coming on as a second half substitute the former fc robo queens forward has now become the first nigerian and african to win the uefa women's champions Champions League. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. We're done with Panorama. Thank you very much for your time. But remember, the fight against rape and rapists is still on. So do well to connect with us. I'm Ruth Aguela. Bye.